If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you just couldn't get enough of the equation deriving excitement from the last video I did on understanding the kinematic equations. In that video, we used our real world understanding of concepts like velocity and acceleration, as well as our understanding of velocity time graphs to derive two out of the five equations of accelerated motion. Now, if you haven't watched the last video, you should totally check it out before getting into this one because man, this physics is mathematically chaotic. To the untrained eye, the next three derivations look like a combination of gibberish and magic, also known as mathematics. So first of all, why do we need more equations? Looking at the two we derived in the last video, you can see that they both involve time, but just like in today's fast-paced demanding world, in some physics problems, we don't always have time. The same is true for other quantities, like acceleration. It helps to have a set of equations that are unbeatable in the face of any evil kinematics problem, where every quantity might not always be known. Take for example this equation. Notice that acceleration is not part of this equation. So it makes sense that if you encounter a problem where acceleration is not given, you would use this equation, as it's actually the only one of the five that doesn't have acceleration in it. Let's look at how we can develop this equation. In the last video, there was a point where we made a substitution so that we could include acceleration in the final form of this equation. So let's go back to that derivation. But what we're gonna do this time is instead of substituting in a times t for vf minus vi, let's distribute both the one half and the t into the brackets. Doing so will produce these two new terms, both containing one half and t. Examining the three terms we now have, you can see that these two are like terms. This means that these two terms have the same variables that have the same power. We can take one vit and subtract half of a vit to get one half vit. Taking a look at the two terms we're left with and switching into math mode, we can spot that they have a common factor of one half t, which we can remove from each term. We can clean this up a bit to write this equation in its more recognizable form. This t is the same as this t, and we know that if you multiply an expression by half, that's really just the same as dividing the expression by two. So we have a nice kinematic equation relating the initial and final velocities, time, and displacement without acceleration. Let's turn our attention to this equation next, which looks strikingly similar to the one above it. From our vf equals vi plus at equation, which we derived in the last video, we know that vi equals vf minus at just from bringing the AT over to the other side and solving for VI. If we take VI and substitute it into this equation for displacement, we're removing VI from the equation and in its place inserting VF minus AT, which will help us derive an equation that we can use in problems where the initial velocity is not given. To simplify, I can distribute this T into the brackets, resulting in two new terms, VFT minus AT squared, I can identify this minus at squared and one half at squared as like terms, adding negative one and a half at squareds together to produce the final form of this equation. Lastly, let's develop the final equation seen in the top left, which does not contain the variable of time. If we go back to the first equation that we derived in this video, d equals vf plus vi over two times t, and rearrange it to solve for t, I can divide both sides by vf plus vi, to bring vf plus i to the other side in a division statement. I can use algebra to multiply both sides of the equation by two, bringing the two up to the other side. So having solved for t, I wanna take a look at one of our other equations that involves t and make a substitution to eliminate that variable from the equation. Doing that in this case results in vf equals vi plus a times the rearranged expression for t that we just found. All that remains is a little bit of algebra work to simplify. I can subtract vi to the other side and multiply the denominator of the right side up to the left side, resulting in a product of these two binomials. Using multiplication of binomials, or FOIL as it's more affectionately known, I can turn this product of binomials into vf squared minus vi squared. Adding the vi squared over to the other side allows me to write this equation in its more recognizable form. vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad an equation that relates the final velocity, initial velocity, the acceleration, and the displacement of an object, without knowing the time during which all of this takes place. So at this point, between these two videos, we've derived the five equations of accelerated motion. And if you lasted this long, good on you, because this concept can be one of the most challenging ones in physics and kinematics, particularly if your math isn't that strong. 
But never fear, because J. Strauss Maths got your back. As you start applying these kinematic equations, if you run into difficulty, leave a comment on this video, and I'll be happy to record a quick video tutorial for you and walk you through the process of how you determine which equation you should use, which is often the most difficult part of any kinematics problem. Thanks for watching.